Mr. George. Hi, George. Okay. We are on 84. They got Kihai Maisel Yaday. There was another case. We talked yesterday about somebody who was appointed to hunt thieves. And these were Jewish thieves. The king gave gave a job to catch the thieves. The thieves were eventually executed by the government. And so yesterday, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, who was in that position, people had criticized him. So there was another example, and Pogabe Leo and Leo Novi met up with this guy. How long are you going to continue catching Israel people that are going to be executed? Well, what do you want me to do? Armona de Malko, it's an order of the king. Your father, when was appointed in this position, ran away to Asia. You should run away to Lutkia. I mean, you should not accept. You should not accept this position. When Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Lazar were walking, they were obese. They had very big bellies. And two cows side by side could walk underneath them and wouldn't even touch their bellies. A certain Roman matron said to them, you guys are so obese that it's impossible for you guys to have cohabit with your wives because of how fat you are. Therefore, your children are probably not your children. They're probably mom's baby. So the answer, our wives are just as obese as us. So that's even a bigger problem. If you are obese and your wife is obese, how are you going to be able to have children? It's not going to, it's not going to work anatomically. So that means just like our bellies are fat, our sexual organ is big. And therefore, it, it, we can overcome it because uh, we we are well endowed. That when you're in love, you know that can overcome the flesh. Why did they give her an answer? Don't don't respond to a foolish question. So they had to respond. They had to defend the uh, paternity of their children. Not, otherwise, there, there would be a gossip going around that they're mamzeri. The organ, the sexual organ, Rabbi Shmuel was like the size of a nine kav. You know, this, this is like they're comparing organ size. It's like a, it's like a big jug. Amrav Papa, Avid Rav Yechlin, Kachem is Bas Chamesh's copy. Rav Yechlin's Aver was as big as five cup. But Amila Bas Shloishin copy, some say three cup. Rav Papa Gufe Kidikur Dar Panoi. His body was like, or his, his belly were like the baskets of Harpanya, which were very big. Amrav Yechlin, Ana Ishtar Mishap Rishalayim. I remain from the beautiful people of Jerusalem. Hi, Mani. Ernie, I think that this calls for your urologic assessment. There you go. Well, I wish I <laughs> now some people say <laughs> some people say that aver means their limbs. I mean, many we showed him whole that it's talking about their sexual organ because the whole context was could they have children because they were obese? Well, if they have a larger organ that would solve the problem. But other people say it refers to the general 
their general limbs. I remain from the beautiful people of Jerusalem. If somebody wants to imagine how beautiful Rabbi Yechonon was, Nesi Kasat the Katzpan Beisilki should take a silver, a, a finely polished silver vessel, Unmaya Partzida Drumnan Sumka, and fill it with rose petals. The Neder Lake Fila Devardo Sumka Lapume, put them on the mouth of the cup. The Nusve Ben Shimshon to put it in the sun in the shade, and it would shine. Ahu Zauri Main Shufid Rabbi Yechonon. That beauty is a little bit like the beauty of Rabbi Yechonon. The Gemara says, Amy, what do you mean? Rabbi Yechonon isn't even mentioned among the list of the beautiful people. Vomer Mar, Shufrid Rav Kahana Main Shufid Rav Avol. The, the beauty of Rav Kahana was a little bit like the beauty of Rav Avol. Shufrid Rav Avol Main Shufrid Yaakov Avinu. The little bit of Rav Avol had a little bit of the beauty of Yaakov. Shufrid Yaakov Avinu Main Shufrid Rav Avol. And Ravavo looked a little bit like Yaakov, and Yaakov looked a little bit like Adam Arishon. Either Rabbi Yechon look at Choshev, like Rabbi Yechon is not included in this list of beautiful people. Shai Rabbi Yechon, the Adras part of he didn't have a beard. All these other people had beards, and that sort of completed their Adras punning, and Rabbi Yechon didn't have a beard. Rabbi Yechon have a Ozo v'yotz v'ashar d'tfilo. Here's a very weird story. Rabbi Yechon would sit where all the ladies would come out of the mikvah, they have to look upon me as they leave the mikvah. They're going to think about me. And therefore, when they cohabit with their husbands, the last image that they're going to have is my image. And the children are going to be as beautiful as me and learn Torah like me. So, the Chachamim told Rabbi Yechon, aren't you concerned about an Ayin Hara? I'm from Yosef. There's no Ayin Hara by the children of Yosef. Ben Paras Yosef, Ben Paras El Alei Oyen. It means people who look upon them, they won't give them Ayin Hara. Rabbi Yosef Bacharina Omer Meyacha, B'yidku L'rov B'kir V'aretz, the bracha to Yosef was that they should multiply like fish. Some fish are covered by the water. Nobody sees them. They are immune from Ayn Hara. Rabbi Yechne was swimming in the Jordan. At this point, Reish Lakish was abandoned, or some say he was a circus performer. He was a he was a a, a big, strong person. Armelay, Chelich Lo Raisa, Rabbi Yochanan tried to say, "Come and learn Torah. You're a big, strong person. Someone like you should invest his koyches in Torah." Armelay, Shufakol Anoshi. So Reish Lakish said to Rabbi Yechon, you know, your beauty is like women's beauty. So Rabbi Yechon offered him, if you do tshuva, learn Torah, I will give you as a wife my sister who's more beautiful than me. Reish Lakish accepted. He wanted to go back to get his clothes after he jumped in the river. The moment he accepted the altar, he became weak. Akri Vasli Vishavi Gavarabo. Rabbi Yechlin taught him Mikra and Mishnah and turned him into a big Tamil Chacham, who was one of the biggest Tamil Chacham of that generation. There was a Machlokas in the Yeshiva, Hasayif, the sword, Vasakin, and a knife. Vapigyan, Varoymech, and a spear. All of these are, are weapons. And a Magal Yadu, Magal Kotzer, a scythe. So every Kli, when you finish the Kli, it's Makabal Tumah. So there's always a debate what's considered that the Kli is finished. So Mamas, I'm Makabal Tumah. Mishas, Gmar, Is it like when you finish in the factory making it? 
But Mamus, so but the debate was Mamus like Marmalach, what is it considered that the work is finished? When you put it in the kiln to fire it up. No. After they take it out of the kiln, you dip it into water to anneal it so that it seals. So that was a debate between Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan. So lista blisto yada. So Rabbi Yochanan sort of needled Reish Lakish that Reish Lakish had been a thief, an armed robber. So he was expert at weapons. So he sort of teased him, but Reish Lakish was embarrassed. Armale, umay honestly. So then, what was this big deal that I became a Talmud Chacham? Hotzel Rebbe Kori Li, Hotzel Rebbe Kori Li. They called me master when I was head of the thieves. And now they call me Rebbe here as well. So what was the benefit of learning Torah? The benefit is I brought you under the, the wings of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You should be thanking me. So Chalash died Rav Yechelen. So Rav Yechelen got embarrassed. And of course, you know, when a Tamil Chalash becomes embarrassed, Cholosh Rav Rish Lakish. Rish Lakish got sick. Asay Achzai Kabachia. Rav Yechelen's sister, who was Rish Lakish's wife, came to her brother Rav Yechelen and says, Amrle, Asay Bishvil Bani. Daven for him so that my children love a father. Amrle, Azvay Yisrael Chaniachia. He, he, Rabbi Yechelen quoted to his sister, Apostle, that if your orphans are left, I will I will be for them a father. Rabbi Yechelen was saying, I will take care of them. So the wife said, I don't want to remain alone as a widow. Make him better for me. The Almanus will also rely on me. In fact, Nach Nafshid Rish Lakish. Rosh Lakish died. And now, Rabbi Yechlin was upset that he, he had lost his best, best Tavid Rosh Lakish. Om Rabbono, man lezer lez filadaytes. Someone has to go and, and restore the spirits of Rabbi Yechlin. So, nezer Rabbi Lezer ben Pedas. The Mechadetin Shmaid say, Rabbi Lezer ben Pedas, he was very sharp. He made, they thought they could he could take the place of Rish Lakish. Ozel Yosef Kameh, he sat in front of Rav Yechnon, called Milsa Dovram Rav Yechnon, Amrle Tanya Masayla. Whatever Rav Yechnon would say, Rav Lazarus Rav would say, you know, there's a Baraisa that supports what you're saying. Amrle, Ad Kibar Lakisha, are you like Rish Lakish? You think you can fill his place? Bar Lakish or Rish Lakish, Ki Yamina Milsa. When I would say something, Havi Makshuli Esim Varba Kushison, he would ask me twenty four kashas on what I said. We're for Kinale Esim Varba Puki, and he would answer the twenty four kashas through this Shakla Vitaya. Ume Mele Rafka Shmeitzer. This sugya expanded. We understood it better. And you say the Ata Amr Tani Mesayilach. You can just sit there and say Tani the Mesayilach. Don't I know that what I said is correct? I don't need you to tell me that what I said is correct. I don't need support. I need oppos opposition. So Rabbi Yechon went around tearing his clothes, and crying, where are you, Rish Lakish? Why are you, Rish Lakish? He became a shigar. He either became demented or psychotic. And boy, Rabbanon, Rachmi Alei Benach Napshe. The Rabbanon saw Rabbi Yechon was in such despair that they davened and he died. That's the story of Rabbi Yechon, Rish Lakish. So we learned yesterday that Rabbi Lozer, Rabbi Shimon, who had been catching the thieves and was concerned because one of the people he caught was put to death. He felt guilty. So he did an, a surgery on himself. He opened up his belly and they took out all the fat and they saw that it didn't 
rot that was proof that he's a tzaddik gomor. Rabbi Lozer was still questioning is he doing correct? Kabbalah Yisuri. So he was given Yisurim, painful lesions to atone. They would put on his bed 60 mattresses. Or at night, when he, they moved the mattresses, in the morning when he woke up, there was these mattresses were full of blood and pus that had come out of his boils on his back. <coughs> So his wife made him 60 different dishes and he ate them and he got better. But his wife didn't allow her husband, Rabbi Lozer, to go to the yeshiva. They would shepherd with him, why are you catching these thieves? And she was concerned about his health. But we to Amrlu at night he would say to the Yisurim, Achai v'reyai, Bo, come. And B'tzaf in the morning, Amr le'em, Zilim v'nei b'tul Torah, leave, so I can go learn Torah. Yom echad shama dvisu. Once the wife heard him, what he was saying, Amr le'ay, At maizu lu'alecha, you're bringing these things on yourself. Kilisa momen shal be'sabo, because of your illnesses, you're spending all the money that I brought into the marriage for my father's house. So she rebelled against her husband. She went back to her father and he was left without anybody to take care of and with no money. There were 60 sailors. They brought for him 60 servants with 60 persons, and they made him the 60 dishes that the wife would make. Because once they, the sailors were in Sakon of drowning, and they made a net there that if they would be been saved, they'd bring Matonis, and he saved them. So there was somebody, even though his wife wasn't there, to take care of him. Yom Echad Amrila Labarte, Zili Boki Bavucha Mai Kavidayidna. The wife who was at, at her at her father's house told his told her daughter, "Go visit your father. How he's doing?" Asya, the the daughter came. So Rabbi Lazar said to the daughter, "Go tell your wife." Our wealth now is even bigger than your family brought. That the boats. Have brought schoira and from from far away lechem was brought. So he ate, he drank, he got healthy, and he came to the yeshiva. Because remember, his wife wasn't there to prevent him from going. So Jewish women bring to the yeshiva examples of dam nida that they're not sure. Are they Tomei, are they Torah? So they bring it to the yeshiva. And these were 60 questionable bloods, kesems, that were on a begin. And, and the, nobody in the yeshiva could answer if it was Nida or not. And Tarinu, he was an expert, and he said, they're all Tohor, you can live with your husbands. The Chachamim were surprised, really. There wasn't one out of the 60 that he was mis that he was in doubt, all 60 are correct. If I'm correct, let all of these 60 women who are going to have relations with their husbands based on what I said, let them all be male children. And if I'm not correct, let there be a female. And then all 60, you know what the odds are? for 60 women in a row to have male children. It's like one in a billion trillion, whatever. I mean, it's a massive amount. And therefore, 
it was a sign from Shemayim that he was correct. They were, and everyone, Asikum al Shmei, all of these children were named Elozer. Tanya Marebi, Kama Pri, Ruvi, Abit, Larisha, Zu. This wife of Elozer Reb Shimon that had prevented her husband from coming to Yeshiva, look how much Pruvu she prevented from happening in Yisrael. Because if he would have been around, he would have had more people being able to be tohar that the, and, and not be tohar. You have a nafshe when Rabbi Lazar was going to die. Rabbi Lazar Visu, he told his wife, Yadal Rabbonan Dretichila. I know that Chacham are unhappy with me. They're angry with me because I had, my job was to catch the thieves. Let me ask you, shop here. And they're not going to treat me covered in my kvura. So therefore, oignin balisoi velotik lemiloi. He asked his wife to keep him in the attic after his after his death. Don't be afraid. Nothing's going to happen to my body. The mother of Yochanan told me, and this was had been told to her by the wife of Rabbi Rabbi Shimon, that Lopachos Metamne Yisrael Lotafei Me Esri Metart Nishani Uvnis Ibal Yisra, that Rabbi Lazar remained after his death in the attic, no less than eighteen years and no more than twenty-two years. And Kiyav Eselik the Mei Nena Lei B'Mazir Kiyav Mishdam Debeinei Minei Avasadama. When I would go up to the attic to check, and I would see, I would pluck a hair. There would still be blood coming. That means he was still fresh as if he died two minutes ago. But I did. One day I went up and I saw a worm coming out of his ear. So I I I I became depressed because worms are now taking over his body. So So my husband appeared to me in a dream. And he says, don't worry about the worm. That was a special punishment. Somebody in front of me made disparaging comments against the Talmud Chacham, and I didn't protest enough. It's because I heard with my ear, and I didn't protest. So midah connected mida, and onesh was occurred that a worm would come out of my ear. He have also betrayladina. People would come to her to the house of Rabbi Lazar after his death, and. Abu Kaimabo, they would stand, they, two people would, instead of going to Beisdin, they would stand at the door. Omar Mar Milsa, Mar Milsa, each one would say their piece. Nafi call him Al Yusuf, Omar, each Ploniata Chaim, each Ploniata Zakoi. They would hear a voice coming from the attic. You, Chaim Yankel, are Chayiv. You, Shimon, are Potter. Yom Echad Ava Kominsid Visubari Shabbosa. The wife was arguing with a neighbor. So the neighbor said, you should be like your husband and not be Zoycha Tikvura. Now, this clothes that the neighbor said, the, the Rabbanin heard about. I mean, Rabbanin, we, we can't allow this, that there's a person not buried. So we have to bury him with appropriate honors. Some say his father, remember Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Shimon, we're talking about Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. So Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai appeared in a dream to the Chachonim, and he said to them, Freda Achas, Yeshli Benechem, I have uh, one, you know, one, one, one pony among you, the Iyatem Rotzim Aviyatsui, and you know what, you're preventing him from burial. So the Chachonim came, to bury him. Lo shavku b'nei Achbarya. The city, Achbarya, which is where Rabbi Lazar was, refused to give up the body. The Choshani Davinayim Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon, all these years that Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon was resting in the attic, they never found a wild animal in the city. They saw that as a zgula, that through the schus of the presence of Rabbi Lazar, it was protecting the city. So they didn't want to give up the body. 
Yom Echad Mala Yom Kippur Av It was Erev Yom Kippur. Everybody in that city was busy. Quickly, Shod Rabban Libnei Biri Vaskula Arsei. So they quickly got his coffin. They brought him to Meiron, where Rabbi Shem Ben Yochai is buried, to bury him next to his father. By the way, in Meiron is both is both Rabbi Shem and Anna Lod. Those of you who've been to Meiron, you have the kever of the father and the son. There was a snake in the opening of the cave that didn't let them to come in. So they said, snake, snake. Open up your mouth and let the son go next to the father. So the snake left and let them go in. And they buried him. So after the death of Rabbi Lozer Shalak Rebbe, the Daber Ishto, Rebbe sent a message to the wife of Rabbi Lozer to marry him. Rebbe wanted to marry the widow. Shalchalei, so the wife responded, Kodesh, the vessel that the holy Rabbi Lozer used, you're going to have a relation, you're going to have a wife, your chol compared to Kodesh of my husband. And Tamon Amrin in Eretz Yisrael, they used a saying, that means where the Balabayas hung his sword, the shepherd hangs his... Uh, hangs his basket to feed sheep. That means it's not Roy that you're going to take the place of my husband. So Shalach Law, Rebbe said, fine. Rabbi Lazar was greater than me than Torah. Remember, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, and Rebbe were the same age, and they had studied Torah together. And here Rebbe seems to admit that regarding Torah, he was greater than Rebbe. But regarding my simtoivim, he wasn't greater than me. But the wife said, "Listen, with regarding Torah, I don't know which one of you was greater. But the my have a copy like Yisuri. He was he accepted Yisurim all those years, so he he had greater my simtoivim. So the Gemara asks, now where? How did Rabbi know that Rabbi Lozer Rabbi Shimon was greater than him in Torah?" The Chiyavu Yasvi, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, Rabbi Shuben Korfa, the two Doyle Ador in the previous generation was Rabbi Shimon Gamliel and Rabbi Shuben Korfa. And they would sit as Safsoli on the benches. Yasvi Kamai, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, the Rabbi. Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi were young. They would sit on the floor. Ara. Makshum Farku. They would ask and they would answer the Kashas. Amri, so the Chachamim said, we are drinking turf from, from them. And they should sit on the ground. We need to give them more cover, even though they're young. So they made them benches and they told them they can sit on the benches with the Chachamim. So Rav Shimon said, Freda Achas Yeshli Benechem. So Rabbi Shimon Gamliel's son was Rebbe. So he said, I have one special, like a pony. If you're going to put him up at such a young age, it will be an Ainhara against him. And I don't want, so I don't want Rebbe to be sat on the Safsan yet. So so they put Rebbe back down on the on the ground like he was before. So, but Armel Rebbe should been karcha. So, Mishiesh lo av yichya. So, Rebbe Shimon Gamliel, who had a father alive, is protecting his son from the Ein Hara. So only he will live. Mishiesh lo av will die because Rebbe Shimon had lost. Rebbe Lozer had lost his father. Rebbe Shimon. So we have to be worried about the Ein Har against Rabbi Lazar. So Achtu not is Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon. So they put Rabbi Lazar back down on the ground. Cholash Daite. Rabbi Lazar got them uh, uh, insulted. He didn't know what was going on. So you think that Rabbi is like me? 
I'm greater than him. So Adayu Yoima Kiyoma Rabbi Milsa of Masile Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon. When Rabbi would say something, Rabbi Lazar would add in with proofs. He can't from then on. Kiyovama Rabbi Yeshli Laashiv. Sometimes Rabbi would say, "Listen, I have a kasha to ask." So Rabbi Lazar would preempt Rabbi and say, "Yeah, yeah, this is what you want to answer," but he would then ask five kashas on it. And he pushed Rebbe's s'mores out of the way. And now if you would have asked the question, they, they wouldn't have made any sense. So now, Cholosh died to the Rebbe. The Rebbe was insulted. Also, Armelie Lavua. So Rebbe went to report all this to his father, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Armelie Bni. Don't be upset. He's greater than you. Why? Shuhu Ari Ben Ari. He's a lion, the son of a lion. Because who was his father? Shem ben Yochai, who was the God of Lador. The Ata Ari ben Shua. You, Rebbe, are an Ari, but I'm only a fox. Rabbi Shem Gamliel was modest and he was he made himself small. So he's, since he was smaller than the father of Elazar, Rabbi Shem ben Yochai, so it's not such a big surprise that he's so smart. But from this story, Rebbe understood the Gedula and Torah of Rebbe Lozer. Rebbe, Shloishan There are three people who are the greatest modest. Abba, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, because you can see to what extent Rabbi Shimon Gamliel made himself nobody. And then, Ubnei Beser, Vyaraz and Betshol will deal with them tomorrow. Okay. So, very good Agatha. These are famous Agathas. Um, um, tomorrow we'll learn at 4 30.